This for me is the easiest way to play Autumn Leaves with just six chord shapes, that's all you need. Now there are numerous ways we can play the chords to Autumn Leaves, but for someone getting started with jazz, what are the easiest shapes for the transitions? Is it four note drop two, drop three, even drop two and four voicings, Eric Clapton style? For me, having taught this song many, many times, I think the simplest thing to get started with is with three note voicings, which include the root, third and seventh of the chord. There's less cooks in the kitchen, if you like. Now in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you these six shapes, run through the form and the order of the chords to autumn leaves, and run through some practice suggestions also. Now the chart and chord shapes you see on the screen are available to download as PDFs from my website. So check the description for a link to today's resources and also you'll find there information about my Patreon page uh, where each month I do a deep dive with a jazz standard. Now let's get onto it. Now we're going to learn Autumn Leaves in the key of E minor and just for info some people also like to play this song in G minor. The first shape you're gonna need is the minor seven chord with the root on the E string. We're gonna use this for A minor seven at fret five, and F sharp minor seven flat five at fret two. The second shape is also minor seven, but with the root on the A string. We're gonna use this for E minor seven at fret seven, D minor seven at fret five, and F sharp minor seven flat five at fret nine. The third shape is dominance on the root A. We're gonna have B seven at fret two and D seven at fret five. We're also gonna use dominance on the E string for G seven, A seven, and B seven. Shape number five, the major seven with the root on the E string. We're gonna use G major seven at fret three. Finally, shape six, you need major seven with the root on the A string, C major seven, fret three. Now you might be thinking there's more than six chords there. There's six shapes, it can enable us to play more than six chords. Now one point to note is that technically, in, in, in theory, all of these chords contain four notes, a root, a third, a fifth, and a seventh. And we're just playing three, the root, the third, and the seventh. In all instances, we are omitting the fifth. Now the chords still convey their quality without this. However, you might miss it on the F sharp minor seven flat five, and you could use these two shapes, this one root E, and this one root A, if you feel it misses a bit of its character, but I've deliberately tried to keep all the chords to three notes and as simple as possible. With that flat five missing, it really wouldn't be a problem if we were playing with other people, the bass player or the, or the pianist might cover it, for instance. Before I run through the chords, the form on this one is A, A, B. It's 32 bars in total. Each A section is eight bars, and then the B section is 16 bars. So let me play through the A section chords. This is all about a journey to E minor. Let's see how we get there. So the dots at the start and the end of this section mean you repeat those bars. So we're gonna play A, A. So let me play it through for you twice. One, two, three, four. down. So at the start we start on A minor 7, root on the E string, and then we're going to go next door to the A string to D7. There's a bar of each, so 1, 2, 3, 4 into D7. Look, the way I'm using that A, fingering that A minor 7, middle finger and then the ring finger barred, means the move to that D7, barely moving. First finger's ready to go as well. And then we move to G major 7, root E. C major 7 root A, little finger can stay down there, look. So that first line, A minor 7 into D7, G major 7 into C major 7. And I'd pick those notes individually as well, don't worry about playing time yet. A 
looking for clear, beautiful sounding notes. No buzzes, no um, like too much pressure or anything, just, just enough pressure for the notes to come out. Then bar five, the second line of the A section, F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven, and then this is the biggest move you're gonna have to make in the song. E minor seven up here. Now, the reason why we're going up here is E minor off the E string, you know, or E minor seven would be an open chord and that would wouldn't work with these with the rest of the chords, it would sound inconsistent. Um, so the change there, F sharp minor seven flat five into B7, it's it's the same change as A minor seven to D7 in bars one and two. And then what you've got to do here. To get from B7 to E minor, you can't do this. You can't go, ah, oh, fret 7, like that. That's just not going to work. You're not going to be able to play in time when you do that. So if you look when I change between the two, I form the shape as I move up the neck. Um, so from here, got the shape already into it. So, and because we're just using these same three fingers here, it's not so much movement. Um, key things with chord changes throughout all of this. Keep the fingers close to the guitar, don't lift away from the guitar. Um, it, fingers are still touching the strings as I change string chords. And just an obvious point, but every chord is getting one bar, so one, two, three, four, that count, apart from that E minor seven at the end, which has two bars, so two counts of one, two, three, four. Onto this B section, things change up a little here. Now this B section is busier, but there is a lot of repetition. You'll notice F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven, E minor seven occurs three times, for instance. And there's also a progression from the A section, A minor seven, D seven, G major seven. So there's plenty uh, we've already done. Now I've moved F sharp minor seven flat five, B seven up here because it works, I think, more easily with the way the chords fall as, as, as it progresses, but also you know, you don't want to just know F sharp minor seven flat five B seven down here, of going from the E string to the A string. You also want to know it the other way around, going from the A string to the E string. Anyway, let me play it for you. One, two, one, two, three, four. Let's go into each line though. So we start out on F sharp minor seven flat five off the A string. This is the shape we used in the A section for E minor seven. Go into B seven. That finger configuration is the same, so you should make light work of that change, hopefully. Back to E minor seven, two bars. We're then gonna pick up the progression we used at this very start of the song. A minor seven, D seven, and then two bars of G major seven. Back up the neck, which means form the shape as you move to F sharp minor seven flat five into B seven. And then the frequency of the chords, as I said earlier, is, is quicker here. So two beats on E minor, one, two, and three, four, A seven, one, two on D minor seven, three, four on G seven. So from bar 17, that line of B. Notice it picks up. Gets a bit more intense here with the chords coming at us quicker. And you know, those chords that do come quickly, it's the same three fingers moving around. Look, same configuration, there's a string, then you have nothing on the next string, then the two fingers. So, you know, again, make light work of it. Don't lift your fingers away from the guitar, maintain the shape. What you don't want to do is go, oh, E minus, oh, A7. Can't be doing that. You've got to move the move the sh shape and just go slowly until your fingers get used to that movement. Practice it without playing it, like I'm doing now. That type of thing. And once you you practice it a little bit, try to avoid looking. Um, often comes down to not trying so hard. I think with chord changes. And in the last line, we go F sharp minor seven flat five B seven to two bars of E minor seven. Uh, so there's obviously a few points where we've got to we've got to move between different strings between the E and the A string. There's that one big jump um, from G major seven to F sharp minor seven flat five, and then the quicker chords in bars 19 and 20. And let me play the whole thing through for you, and you can work up towards playing along with me here if you like. So I'm going to play A A B one, 
two, a one, two, three, four. A section two now. Right, so hit that B. One, two, three, four. On to some practice suggestions. My first piece of advice is don't worry about playing in time, that's the end result. Just play out of time and maybe pick the notes of the chords individually. This is good so that you could check all of the notes are ringing clearly, but also you get used to the sound of each individual note and the chords. And, and another important step to do is try to relate the chords to the melody. Do you know where the chords are in relation to the melody? A good goal to work towards is being able to hum or maybe sing that melody as you play those chords. And again, you can do this out of time. Once these shapes start to feel familiar and comfortable, then start to think about playing in time. You could start with just playing one strum per bar, work up towards doing four. Now on the PDF of the chords, I've also included another way you can play A minor seven, D seven, G major seven, C major seven. Now this is definitely worth being aware of. This is with the A minor seven starting at fret 12 on the A string. And I've included it just because some of you may find it easier. If you would like to learn more about this jazz standard and you'd like to you know, work on your all round jazz guitar game, then each month on my Patreon, we focus on a new standard. Now this month, the standard happens to be Autumn Leaves and depending on the tier you join, there is a walking bass study, chord tone etude, and a beginner and intermediate solo. There's also a Discord server, and each month I provide a playlist for recommended listening for the standard of the month. Now you may find that whilst these three note voicings are maybe easy to fret, easy to change between, they might introduce another problem, which is open strings ringing, especially if you're playing with a plectrum. So if fretting hand muting is something you need to get hang of, check out this video from me on the screen, in which I break down how I mute open strings on chords like we've looked at today. If you're new here, please hit, consider subscribing, hit that like button, join me every Wednesday for jazz guitar lessons. Until next time, you take care.